Hello everybody, my name is Charlie, editor and co-host for X2. So with Fall of the Republic just released, I wanted to make a video on the top five ships for skirmish battles. So skirmish has gone through a change compared to Fallen's Revenge where there is no longer five tech levels, it's just three. So you're punished far less for teching up throughout the, uh, the match and you get a lot more ships for your tech level. So it's more viable to tech up whether it be immediately as you start the game or as you've just down a few of your uh, your, your ash so today I wanted to just explore these five ships from the top fifth to the best ship for Galactic Republic. So let's jump right into it. So number five is the Praetor. Now you'd think the highest cost ship in this faction, you'd assume that'd be a lot higher up, but unfortunately not. The good thing about a big ship is its fire output and its general health. However, it isn't such the case uh, for this faction, purely because a ship like this taking on an entire space station would take a lot longer and the enemy would have a lot of time to build a defense to take this ship out. Now, it would really come down to how much uh, money the enemy has to take on this ship. If they don't have anything, then yeah, you know, like, it's pretty much a guaranteed loss. And if you're free of these, it's almost impossible to fight back on this, just purely because of how much health it has and uh, how long it's going to take for you to dismantle all three to save your space station. Um, however, these ships are really expensive. They are 15,000 credits. So three of them is already quite unviable uh, for a win condition, unless you are just absolutely completely ahead. Um, which, to be honest, we're not looking for ships that you should use when you're already really ahead. We're looking at ships that can give you that edge uh, against the opponent. So the Praetor, Praetor does come fifth. There's a multitude of reasons, again, like the health, like the, the power output, like the fact that there is three hard points for its engines, which makes it pretty difficult to uh, demobilize it. But then again, the ship is incredibly slow. So... It has to go around just purely because it's such a big ship. Um, and again, as you can tell, it's very slow and it's, it's, active, its active ability is boost weapon power. So there's nothing here for mobility. So that is why the Praetor does come in at fifth, just because of its firepower and its health, because of its large hit points and a few other things. Fourth on our list is the Acclimator 2. So the Acclimator 2 is probably one of the better Acclimators to get of the three. So for people that are new to the mod, Acclimator 1 is primarily a carrier loadout. So something you'd very much see in Thrawn's Revenge, where it has a lot of fighters spawn in uh, and has a bit of firepower on it on itself. Um, Acclimator 2 is an, has a few less carriers, uh, but a lot more firepower. And uh, Acclimator Assault Loadout is just pretty much just a, a damage ship. You don't expect any um, any fighters from that. So, as you can see here, we've already spawned a fighter. We do spawn some more over time, but it's not as much as the, the Acclimator one. Now, this is situational. Despite it being the fourth position, I am going to load in the carrier version with the Acclimator 2 because it really just depends on the, your situation. Do you need more fighters? Then the Acclimator 1 might help you out there. Have they got more capital ships? The Acclimator 2 might help you more there too. The better thing about Acclimator 2s though is, uh, is that you are able to come in on the sidelines to take out your enemy's um, asteroids. Uh, this is it's really effective, it's difficult to pull those ships out after you've um, destroyed those asteroids. That's why a lot of people use Arkazans or or gunships to come in, take out the asteroid and speed right out of there. But the acclimators can absolutely secure that if the enemy has some form of defense, uh, whether it be satellites, etc, etc. But for a, a, a map like this, uh, Bothawi, there's not many uh, satellites here to defend the um, space station. So bringing in some acclimators on this side to take out this asteroid 
is quite effective. Um, so, with the Acclimator 2 especially having a damage output active, it's really good for its money. It's definitely got a lot of power output. It can probably take on a lot of uh, the opponent's tier 2 ships without too much trouble. So when you drop two or three of these, it's very difficult to fight back unless you're at like a tech level three or have a already secure amount or uh, a secure fleet on your asteroids. So moving along, number three on the list, uh, number two, no, yeah, no, number three, <laughs> number three on the list is the Venator Star Destroyer. Now, the Venator Star Destroyer for 3,500 credits is a brilliant ship. It spawns a lot of fighters, and I mean a lot. Like, this is better than an Acclimator carrier loadout. Uh, it, 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 so, you've got a lot of fighter support to protect this ship, and this ship deals a lot of damage. So, unfortunately, the AI hasn't really, like, thrown in any um, capital ships for me to test this out on. Uh, just purely fighters, but um, but this ship does a lot of damage, especially with its power active. So you can really hone down any tech level two ship that they may have. Um, and the best thing about this is because they are only three thousand five hundred, you can bring in a swarm of these and take out like a Luca Hulk. You could probably even take on a Malevolence if you have enough. Um, so the, you know, it's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant ship to have. Um, so I really recommend that if you are playing this faction, you should at least have two or three of these ships in, on play. Uh, they don't take up a lot in pop cap. They do enormous amounts of damage. They're a great carrier. They're an all round, really productive, versatile ship. So... Again, definitely, definitely have to have one of these ships. Um, sorry, two or three of these ships in your uh, in your battle. So number two, we have the Arkansan ship. I might be pronouncing this wrong. So the Arkansan's light cruiser. Uh, this ship does what I mentioned that the Acclimate can do a lot more effectively, but. You have to make sure that you have, one, have enough of them, and two, you're in and out. You know, if they have defenses, like um, missile satellites that are surrounding the um, the space station, you may struggle, especially if you're trying to take out more than one asteroid. Uh, the good thing about this ship is that you can literally waypoint yourself all the way in uh, with maybe two three, four of these and take out the asteroid within seconds and then be right out of there. There's nothing that the, the opponent can drop in time to counter it unless there's already a fleet there waiting for them or you know, they have a few uh, uh, missile satellites to defend their asteroids. So again, if you feel like they are not fully protected at their space station or any other asteroid that you have knowledge is not being protected these guys can do a brilliant in and out hit job on any opponent's asteroid on top of this the damage output on these ships are really good for a tech level one um they can definitely take on um like some tech level two ships uh, they do need to be in bunches though on their own especially in early slash mid game you need to have a lot of these together, but because they are only, I believe that they are only 1,400 credits, it's just worth it to just spam a few of these down and get the job done. So uh, the Arkansans, uh, voiced by the lovely Shaq from XP Gamers, gets the second place spot. First place, and this ship wins by a long shot, is the... Corellian gunship at 800 credits this ship is immense the damage output the speed the size everything is in its favor and I would argue that 
in like a small group, they will out damage even the Arkisons, which is almost double the cost of this small ship. So why this ship in particular? So at the moment, there is uh, not much that can counter this ship. So capital ships will struggle with this because uh, because it is a gunship. It's focused on taking out larger capital ships. Um, and although it's not much of an anti-fighter because the amount of fighters and bombers are supposed to counter this, that's its strength because it co it's very costly um, to have fighters drop in on this ship. So since our faction that we're playing right now doesn't have a carrier at tech level 1, this is why the ship somewhat exists. Uh, we have to tech up to tech level 2 to hit the acclimator to start bringing in carriers. So the gunship is what you'd probably primarily use at tech level 1. But there's just nothing that is viable to counter this. You could bring in as many fighters as you want, but you've already spent three times as much as the enemy that, that we have building out a fleet of these. And it's going to take a while for those fighters to take down all of them one by one. You need to have a big swarm of fighters for this. And it's, and it's just frankly not worth the money. So in some aspects, yes, you are not effective against these ships. So with the fact that there's not much of a counter yet on these ships we come to the firepower the firepower of these ships is just nuts especially when you have about about eight of them together and you think well eight's quite a lot it's eight eight hundred credits you know like five of these which will already do quite effective amounts of damage you're looking at let me do math hang on don't judge me i'm bringing up the calculator so if you buy five of these already, you already spent enough to get, you know, a Venator and, a, and about 500 credits more. But I guarantee you that five of these will out damage a Venator. Easy. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how to win a game with maybe about 10 of these. Maybe 10 to 15 of these are enough to win a game. Yes, they may have build some defense against you but by then you've already got some larger ships like yeah, venators yeah. and um and acclimators to take the hits for you and because this ship is so small it's really hard to hit especially for a space station so if i bring in maybe about like let's go midway let's go 13 and bring in like just uh just a few fighters so we're going to bring in some fighters and maybe about like 13 of these. And I think that will be enough to take on the space station itself. Now, we've got 10 here already. Let me drop them. So again, like I said, 10, 15, that's quite a lot. You know, you're talking 8,000 to, you know, 1,200 credits. That's getting to like Praetor level, level of cost, uh, executor for sure. So, so why? But you, again, 800 credits. So even if you're in a pinch, that you can still probably afford them. And they build so fast. So you can build a fleet of these very, very quickly. And, and so quickly that it's going to take the enemy longer to get even maybe a decent defense against it. Which is, again... A lot of fighters. So I'm actually just going to bring in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I hope that's eleven. You know what I'm like with counting. So I'm going to bring these into the space station. Now, of course, they don't have any defenses. This is easy AI. But I will show you just how quickly these guys will melt a space station like this. So already you're seeing the shields drop pretty quickly um, and like I said if you have these ships spread around the uh, the space station and you've got a few acclimators a few venators maybe you've got like a, a, a an even like a tech to star destroyer you, you've got something that takes the brunt of the damage the space station 
it's struggling to really do any damage to the front line of these uh, Corvellian gunships because they're because they are so small. So again, you know, the only way to really counter these are like scarab bombers, um, uh, some some of the the carriers that they have, but they're like one thousand six hundred credits, and you're gonna need a good chunk of them to take these guys on, and it's it's nothing, you know. It's, it's, it's nothing on me to just keep building more to counter them. And again, they, they do have some anti-fire ability, uh, anti-fighter abilities. So even then, their counter, they can somewhat counter a little bit. So again, with 10 of these, and with the fighters just, you know, brainlessly running about, not attacking, while these are, we've, they've lost their shields. Let me let me highlight these guys and let me let me target a full health hard point. And done. There we go. Fighter bay. Gone. And this is just like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got eleven of these guys. And I mean that cost me eight thousand eight hundred credits. And there's my win condition. You know? With ships like these, it's it's very hard to justify checking up to level three. Because you are better off buying these ships compared to a Tech to Star Destroyer, a uh, a Secutor, a a Praetor, you know? Like these ships will outgun any of those. Because they don't have the risk of a big ship. So, you know, you drop in a Star Destroyer, you drop that guy in wrong you've just lost upwards of 7500 credits because you're splitting out the cost to about 5 8 10 13 ships you're not at much of a risk you know if you start to realize okay i'm not really winning this fight just pull them back full speed and you've got an effective getaway Star Destroyers don't have that luxury. Is and you know, depending on how you put them in, it's either an all-in or safely shoot from a distance. And and you, you know, you need to have a good fleet to do that. With these guys, not so much. You know, you can just pull them away, and once you feel like you can't enter back into the battle, you can just drag them back in. All power to the engine. <clears throat> And I should also mention that this is a turn on switch. I actually just figured this out now. There is no cooldown for their, their, their boost engine powers, which is nuts to me, actually. The fact that they can just come in at full speed, they get ready for the attack, and then they can just turn off. So they can increase their power after they, they've gotten into position. So these ships are incredibly strong. So. You know, if you want to win a few games against your friends without telling them how OP these ships are, give it a go. Um, the devs are aware of this. We have talked to Corey uh, and the team about uh, about the ship um, in terms of balancing. They might have a bit of a reduction in power. I can't guarantee that. I haven't heard that. But the reason they are so strong right now is that they don't really have much of um a counter which they are going to introduce uh into skirmish because you know like you would naturally build uh gazanti cruisers against against um uh, the Karelian gunships but they aren't really effective enough so that is where i will conclude the video um i hope you enjoyed this this was really fun to make um, if you guys want me to cover more about the meta in Skirmish for Fall of the Republic, Thrawn's Revenge, I'd love to. I don't think there's enough coverage of um, Skirmish, personally, and I'd love to get more eyes on it um, compared to Galactic Conquest. Uh, I just feel like there's so much uh, to play with on a high-speed meta-based 1v1 skirmish battle so uh again if you want more of these 
let me know. Maybe in the next video, I can do it on Confederacy class. So, yeah. Uh, again, thank you so much. My name has been Charlie. This has been X2. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.